I love Delta Epsilon proofs. Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to prove that the limit of x cubed as x approaches 2 uh, is equal to 8. So first, um, let's recall the definition of a limit. Okay, so we'll say that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to L. Okay, this means, I'm going to use um, some notation from, from math. Um, some more advanced notation. We're going to use quantifiers, okay? So this means for all epsilon greater than zero, okay? So that symbol means for all, okay? So for all. There exists, this means there exists, there exists a delta greater than zero, okay? Such that, so st means such that, for every real number x, so this means for all x in the set of real numbers, with so what does this mean? This means that when x gets really, really close to c, f of x gets really, really close to l. So we can write that using absolute value because absolute value is the distance function that we use in the world, in the real world, right? It's, it's a measure of distance. And so when we're studying real numbers, we also use uh, the absolute value function for distance, typically. So this is going to be the distance between x and c. We want that to be small. So how small? Smaller than delta. Now we have this also here. This is thrown in to make sure that x is actually not equal to c. Just to throw in the emphasis that we're getting really, really close to c. We don't actually care about what happens at c. So for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0, such that for every real number x with this condition, we have the following condition. We have that f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So that's, that's what it means uh, for a limit to exist. Here l is a real number. So in this particular problem, uh, our c is going to be 2, and our l is 8, and our f of x, our f of x is x cubed. Okay, so before we do the proof, uh, that's the easy part. The proof is the easy part. The hard part is figuring out the proof. Once we figure out our proof, uh, writing it is just a mere formality. So let's figure out the proof. So scratch. This is the hardest part. So to figure out the proof, we need to figure out our value of delta. So we'll have an epsilon with us in the proof. And we need to find delta. So we need, we need delta. We're allowed to assume this condition, and then we have to show that this condition is true. So when we assume this condition, I'm going to write it over here. So we have x minus, and then c is 2. So x minus 2 less than delta. We need this to imply that the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. So f of x here is x cubed, and l is 8. And you want this to be less than epsilon. Okay, that's what we want. We want this to be less than epsilon. The natural thing to do here is use the difference of cubes formula, right? You can write this as x cubed minus 2 cubed. And recall the difference of cubes formula it says if you have a cubed minus b cubed, it's a minus b, and then it's a squared plus ab plus b squared. So in this case, we'll apply it to x cubed minus 2 cubed. a will be x and b will be 2. So this is equal to absolute value x minus 2, absolute value, right? That's a minus b. Then we square the x. That's going to be x squared, x squared plus, and then ab, that'll be 2x, so 2x plus, and then b squared, so 2 squared is 4. And again, we want this to be less than epsilon. That's what we're trying to do, right? Now we're at the hard part of the problem. So we know that the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta. So we're allowed to put a less than here and then just drop this absolute value and replace it with a delta. We can do that. Why? Because this is less than delta, right? So this whole thing is less than delta times this. Ignore this. Check this out. This is gone. If this is gone, you can just, you can just drop you can just put a less than and a delta, right? So all we're doing is we're basically multiplying both sides by this quantity here. So everything is still okay. And now we need to somehow get rid of these x's, right? We need this to be less than epsilon. So now we got to go back and think. So if you think about this, x is really close to 2. So it's somewhere between 1 and 3. It's a small number, right? So how do we formalize that in the proof? Keep in mind, we're allowed to pick our delta. In fact, it says here we need delta. So check this out. 
If you rewrite this and drop the absolute value, you get x minus 2 less than delta greater than negative delta, right? That's, that's, how, that's what happens when you drop the absolute value, right? Why? This is a number whose distance from 0 is less than delta, so it must be between negative delta and delta. Then you can add 2 to all three sides, so you get delta plus 2. Then over here you get uh, 2 minus delta. Maybe I should have written that as 2 plus delta. It doesn't really matter. Let's say delta is 1. Let's just say it's 1. Say, why 1? Well, you'll see. If delta is 1, you get 2 minus 1, which is 1, and then you get x, and then you get 1 plus 2, which is 3. So if delta is equal to 1, we can say that x is between 1 and 3. What if delta was smaller? What if delta was 1 half? If delta is 1 half, we get 2 minus 1 half. So we get 4 halves minus 1 half, so we get 3 halves. Again, if delta is 1 half, we get 2 minus 1 half. So 4 halves minus 1 half is 3 halves. If delta is 1 half, we get 1 half plus 2. That's 1 half plus 4 halves, that's 5 halves. But look at this. This is still less than 3, right? Because this is like less than 6 halves. And this is still bigger than 1. Also, look at that. x is less than 3 and bigger than 1. So if delta is 1 or smaller, we can say that x is between these two numbers. The or smaller part is key for a complete understanding of the proof, right? So again, uh, if delta is 1, we can say this is true. And if delta is smaller, we can still say that. So I'm going to erase this. Just keep in mind, if delta is 1 or smaller, we have this condition. Okay, so now we can say that this is less than, and we can replace all of the deltas with 3, all of the x's with 3's, right? Because x is less than 3. We have that if delta is equal to 1 or smaller. So this will be 9 plus 6 plus 4. Did I do that right? 3 squared is 9, 2 times 3 is 6, and then 4. Um, looks like we get... Um, did I do that right? So x is less than 3, so 3 squared is 9, 2 times 3 is 6. Yeah, it looks okay. Uh, when you add these, we get delta times um, 9 plus 6 is, well, this is 10, 19. 19 to 1, that's up here, 19. And we want this to be less than epsilon. So as long as we take delta, so when will this be less than epsilon? Well, it's going to be equal to epsilon if, say, delta was epsilon over 19. If delta is epsilon over 19, then you get epsilon over 19 times 19 equals epsilon. If you take, so everything will work, the proof will work. Um, if you take any number smaller though, let's say you take, uh, let's say you take epsilon over 100. If you take epsilon over 100, you would get epsilon over 100 times 19. That's still less than epsilon. So we can take delta to be equal to epsilon over 19. But we know anything smaller also works. That's the key. Just like before, delta equals 1 will satisfy this condition or any number smaller. Likewise, delta equals epsilon over 19 will satisfy this condition or any number smaller. Therefore, our delta is going to be the smaller of the two. It'll be the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 19. And again, a key to a complete understanding of this proof is realizing that 1 or smaller will work and epsilon over 19 or smaller will work. Therefore, we take the minimum of the two, and then everything is taken care of. So that's a hard thing um, for people to, to, to understand and to grasp, right? This is a harder problem. Um, let's go ahead and do the proof. That's our delta. Let's, let's knock this out and finish it. Uh, I'll just erase this, and we'll start our proof. So proof. We'll start by saying uh, epsilon is a positive number. So we'll let epsilon be greater than 0. So you could say be arbitrary, right? We have any epsilon in this case, so it's just some positive epsilon. Now we're going to choose our delta. So we're going to choose delta equal to the minimum. Right? We did all of our scratch work just to come up with this. So 1 over epsilon, and then epsilon over 19. Then as a formality, we repeat the condition. Then for all x and r with the distance between x and 2 less than delta, just repeating what's here, right? what we did before except c is equal to 2, we have, we have, and so now we can finish the proof. We have f of x, which is x cubed, minus 8. This is equal to, we know, we worked it out, this is x minus 2, uh, I believe it was x squared uh, plus 4x plus 8, I believe that was correct. Uh, and then, so this is less than, um, what would this be, less than, this is less than delta, and this is less than, we said this was uh, 3, so 9 
uh, plus 12 plus, uh, oh, this is a 4. This is a 4. This is a 4. Uh, yeah, plus 4. All right, did we do that right? Let's see. So, oh, that's a 2. That's a 2. Wow, I'm really messing up here. <laughs> Let me slow down. So, <clears throat> so, I believe this is what we had before, right? So, this is less than delta times, and then we replace all the x's with 3's. So, it would be 9 plus 6 plus 4. Yeah, so what happened there is I messed up. Uh, keep in mind, x cubed minus 8 uh, is equal to uh, x cubed minus 2 cubed, which is x minus 2, and then x squared plus 2x plus 4. Got a little too excited and thought I had it memorized. <laughs> Fail. Okay, so this is equal to delta whew, 19. There we go. And then we know delta is less than or equal to, uh, delta is equal to the minimum of these. So in particular, it's less than or equal to epsilon over 19. And it's cancel, and so you get epsilon. If you're wondering where we use the fact that it's uh, equal to the minimum of 1, that was going from here to here, right? That's where we used uh, this. And you saw the work uh, in our scratch work. So that's it. That was a pretty tough problem. Um, that's it. Take care.